in over the course of three years to tell them all about um, the new way of doing it. It's essential that I got their buy-in. I even did a role play um, with a couple of the pupils um, because I think one of the challenges is finding a quiet place, or at least amongst our families, is finding a quiet place at home to sit and watch the videos. So with Ahmed's brother, in fact, because he was doing a quick learning at the time, he and another person pretend to be at home. This is important for the parents to visualise. Pretend to be at home with an annoying little brother or sister and they make lots of noise in the background. And someone role plays the part of the parents trying to find a quiet place for that child. That might seem like it was taking a bit far, but I really needed parents to understand how difficult it was going to be for this new mode of working for their child to have a quiet place to be able to listen to the videos, not to just sit and think and do a worksheet. Um, once I had all the parents on board, um, I then made sure I, I kept in touch with them using sending out text messages. It was the kind of text message that would say, um, I noticed that your, your son or daughter hasn't yet sent in the Google form. Are there any technical difficulties or is anything I can help with? And so I'd, I, because I'd be there monitoring the Google spreadsheet that was coming in each evening, and I had a sort of cut off at about 9 o'clock. If people hadn't done the Google spreadsheet by then, then I quickly got onto sending group text messages to parents. And that then suddenly, that suddenly brought in a flurry of, of pupils responding, and it definitely meant that the, the height, there was a much, much higher, almost 100% hit rate of return on watching the videos and sending in the Google forms. Okay, uh, making the whole process worthwhile, so making it, uh, making sure that if you're asking them to write notes on the videos, check in the lesson the next day. Uh, making it worthwhile in that if you start the, the following uh, day's lesson by tackling some of the misconceptions and the answers that they sent in, then it kind of closes the loop and, and it makes sense why they had to answer those questions. And the last one is, um, is trying to make your lesson so fun and engaging that if they haven't watched the video, they'd be missing out that they can't participate fully in the joy and the fun of whatever it is they're doing in the lesson because they failed to watch the video. Okay, so we're just trying to use as many carrots as possible rather than sticks. But, as Colin said, there are sticks. So, um, as well as being systematic and trying to do it every day, you need to get into good routines, um, and the pupils need to get into good routines. There are consequences. You know, we already have very, very tight systems at okay, KSA. So, um, some pupils have already been in camera catch up this evening um, before you arrived because they, they, there was some element of their last night's homework that wasn't up to standard. If they fail to watch the video, then rather than just having a 45 minute after school homework catch up, I went for two hours of homework catch up. That means I stay late, but it didn't need to happen very often. Um, we want to sit back for last year. Um, and once, once you've kind of placed that marker in the sand, made very clear where the line is, um, then it doesn't happen very often. Because we're very quick to get around and we have to stay the same as Okay, um, removal barriers, trying to get, um, we only have cohorts of 60, 65. Um, so even trying, trying to get all 65 students to watch videos on, uh, on the internet at uh, homework presents uh, technical difficulties. We try and remove barriers like having an open website rather than, I know we've got people talking tonight about Edmodo and Moodle, um, but the reason why I purposely kept Project 24 wide open was so that I wasn't asking people to have to log in and create another problem. They might have been logging in that function, they might have forgotten the password, etc. So I just kept it all wide open. Um, and also providing alternatives, so giving them the time and space after school to take their phone back to the project and to watch the video at home, or um, speaking to the local library about our pupils going there after school using them there, or suggesting to parents that if there's something wrong with their broadband at home, that they potentially use their parents' iPhone or any smartphone that they have, or they go to an internet cafe. Um, just trying to make sure that we get 100% return um, on those bits on video watching. And there were times when I would um, use a, a, an application called Team Viewer. And I would take over, I would take over the child's computer while they were sat at home. I would take over from my hand and be able to control the computer to try and diagnose what was going on. And then uh, the obvious, but having a Google form at the end of each video, then just as a way of me checking that they might they probably watch the video in order to be able to answer the questions. There are ways around uh, not watching.
watching the video as a, if, uh, I, I know that Arnold probably, well, these guys probably would have watched the video half the time, they just go straight to the question. <coughs> but what you could do, if you were feeling particularly sneaky, is uh, drop in the video what might be called in computer programming term, Easter eggs. So something in the video that the pupils have to watch the video to be able to answer. Um, it's a bit sneaky, it's a bit unplanned. You don't really want to be using that to find out so you can force the pupils to find this Easter egg somewhere in the video. Like the video should be engaging or interesting or worthwhile enough to watch in the first place. Now, I, I never used the Easter egg, but it's uh, an idea I have. I thought I'd share it. Um, so just to finish off um, what I've been talking about, if you quickly go onto the Project 24 website again and click on Autumn 2, if you click on the Autumn 2 tab, you can see how I structured that half term's worth of homework. So from week one to week seven, Monday to Friday, um, with a video of each and a Google form. So if you click on any one of those purple bars, most of those purple bars should work. Um, then below each video, there's a Google form, and hopefully below the Google form, there's also a link to an activity or a game where they can play and extend the practice that evening. So that's the end of what I had to say about trying to get everybody to watch the videos. Time for probably just one question this time before the next person. Great, actually, the right things then, because there's no questions. Okay.